Okay, friends and followers, I'm doing, uh, believe it or not, I'm making an entire tutorial on um, making marinara. Marinara is used for, it's incredibly versatile. It's used for the sauce on your pizzas, can be on pasta, can be mixed with other ingredients like olives and onions for a Amatriciana sauce or the base for lots of other red sauces. But marinara by itself is beautiful and simple. And I have a lot to say about it. That's why I'm making an entire video out, out of it about it. This is my three ingredient marinara. I know that one can fuss about it and there's lots of different opinions. This, uh, you know, I, I, I know it, I know them all, I've seen them all, I've tried them all out, but I'm just making tomato marinara with basil and garlic. The reason, oh, and just so you know, it says here, tomatoes, type San Marco, tomato, tomato type San Marco, or San Marco type tomatoes don't um trust me i'm not i didn't get seduced into the concept that these plum tomatoes were from san marzano italy near rome i just noticed that they were as cheap as regular plum tomatoes domestic ones and these are domestic ones using that variety of tomato and they were the same price and they were only a dollar 89 for a large can whereas actual um, Marzano tomatoes are $6 a can. So, and I'll try those too, but the fact is when making a marinara, you're, you're cooking down, you're cooking down, you're reducing and reducing and reducing. And I've used just regular tomatoes in the past. Okay, but not from the hothouse. That's another thing I wanna mention. If you're going to make something with only three ingredients, they better be good and in fact, canned tomatoes are made out of some of the best tomatoes there are. They are often ripe when they're picked in California, Chile, Australia, Latin America, wherever they come from. And they are sometimes blemished, so they can't go to market in the big cities at Whole Foods and Loblaws and superstores. And if they're ripe, that means they can't travel for 5,000 kilometers. So we basically get the remainders in our abundant grocery stores. The, the true goodness is in the can for the most part. And I'm not using, Unico is a quality brand. I'm not using um, cheap stuff just to be cheap. I'm, I know from experience that really good tomatoes exist in these cans. And these are whole tomatoes. I don't need them to be diced or pureed, but they do come in some puree. Most canned whole tomatoes do. Um, that's all good because when you cook them down, I slice them a bit, The cooking in the cooking, they will disintegrate. So that's my little lecture on tomatoes, on canned tomatoes. They're the best. And then there's the other ingredient. By the way, I, when I say three ingredients, I'm, I'm excluding the, the Evo, extra virgin olive oil, and the salt and pepper, because I think obviously you have to fry up, you have to cook the garlic and you have to season the sauce. That would happen no matter, no matter how many ingredients you have, so I'm not including them as ingredients. So, I'm going to show you again my peeling trick. I'm going to do four whole large cloves because I have, because I have 28 fluids, three 28 flu fluid ounce cans, 796 milliliters. That's almost a liter. And this is the way it gets. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because I've mentioned this before. There are so many tricks on TV and things you can buy on Amazon to get the, get the skin off. But I just did in 10 seconds while I'm laughing. 
and I'll do the last two the same way. You can put them in a bag and shake them around, but I don't really see the point when you can just do it that way. Oh, oops, almost lost that one. Okay, there's that one. I loosened it, I just had to peel the, I didn't even peel it, I just pulled the entire shell off, the skin off. Let's check this camera position, because I knocked it. Okay, here's another one I'm just going to take off because this one's a little soft inside. Anyway, so just going to take the little ends off like that. I'm not going to mince this because I actually don't have to. Everything's going to be cooking for over an hour, possibly an hour and a half, possibly two hours. And we're just going to... Chop, 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 chop. And that's your chopped garlics number one. Number two, fan it out, separate it. Number three, keep your fingers bent down so only your knuckles touch the knife. Here we go again. And then of course you could mince it, but there's no, we don't have it by chopping with the rocking motion, rock, rock, rock. But here we go. And it's done, voila. So then we turn on, we got our, this is my soup stock bowl. I have a much bigger one for turkey stock and so on, but this is for soups and sauces. I'm going to turn it up to medium high and do quite a bit, maybe three tablespoons of, two or three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I can feel the heat, but I know this stove top is rather, has a delayed reaction. We're gonna throw that in. Didn't mean to ruin that. I'm trying to go fast because I know people like faster videos. So um, basically, I could have let that oil get up to that kind of ripply stage before throwing them in, but I actually don't want that because I want to flavor. I don't want to like fry the oil, uh, the garlic, the lye en français. I want to just, I want to gently heat and inf heat the garlic and infuse it with, um, infuse the oil with garlic. And I'll know there'll be a slight sizzling and I'll know that it's ready for the tomatoes when I smell the garlic. And that's, that's usually a minute after you start, well, it's about 30 seconds after you start hearing the, or, mm, I'm already smelling it, but you need to see a slight sizzle. Basically there's, it's not that crucial. I'm making it sound terrible, but terribly difficult. But actually, um, it's not. You just, basically, you just don't want to burn. You just don't want to burn the uh, garlic. You don't want it to turn brown either. It gets bitter. And it's going to be cooking in the sauce for hours. Yes, possibly hours. Oh, there it goes. Mm. Gosh, nothing like that. So you can see her, the gar the basil here, I'm just pre, I'm getting it ready. It won't go in until the, I don't know if you can hear that, it's sizzling a bit. Turn it down a bit. I don't have to stir it, it's all in one level, layer. I'm just getting the basil leaves ready for the chiffonade, which we'll, I'll put in after the sauce is done. There's no point in cooking it in the sauce because this is an aromatic. You know what, I don't need a chiffonade. I'll just chop it. 
it's just it's something that the fl the flavor fl flows as soon as it hits warm food there's nothing more italian smelling than these three ingredients and they also look very italian white red green very italianist looking okay so that's for later these are sizzling and it's time to put in my tomatoes hear that you know that the heat you know that i got the timing right garlic's still white slightly brown not really tiny i use the big pot here because i want to make extra and i want to freeze it so i don't have to do this every time i want a little pasta sauce or whether if i want to make i'm going to turn it up again or if i want to make um pizzas anytime I want. I have little separate containers. And here again, I know this is a controversial issue, but it's not to me. I do it my way and I'm just telling you what I like to do. So I don't really need um, 30 million people telling me how they add sugar. If the tomatoes are good, they're full of sugar. They're full of carbohydrates. And I'm going to be cooking this where it's low and slow for quite a long time and cooking low and slow I mean it's easy you just go watch TV or take the dog for a walk out or you know play with your cats I mean let it go leave the lid off it will reduce and the sugars concentrate while the while the unflavored bits like water meaning water mostly um, evaporate so I'm just taking the sharp knife and I'm just going to chop them a little to get them started. They're going to break down by themselves. Eventually. But if you're next, you give a nice head start and all the juice inside and of them will come out to get and that will give it a chance to for the entire product to have a the finished product to have the flavor of the garlic and a little salt. So at this point, I'm gonna add a little salt. Remember, just a little, because as it reduces, you'll have flavors like salt and the sugars and the tomatoes will, if you have it or even put it down, cook it down to two thirds, then the flavors that are already there will be that much more strong. And I think these tomatoes probably have salt in their, in their cans. That's kind of the normal way they're done. So you be careful with the salt and the pepper can go in near the end. You don't have to cook pepper forever and nothing happens when you do that. Except for pepper tends to go bland and then um could go bitter although i've never had that problem and that's actually when you, when you're off the heat then you put in the basil which is the third ingredient so this needs to simmer come to a simmer i can hear it got my wooden spoon not all the tomatoes are chopped up that's okay because I'm going to put the timer on for an hour, cook that down, turn it to low, cook it down for an hour, and you won't need sugar. And in fact, you don't need anything. It's the freshest. It's kind of like the freshness of going to Little Italy and just getting a little bowl of spaghetti and marinara, and it's that delicious. Perhaps they put sugar in, but I doubt it. There's no need. It's not very Italian to put sugar in things. Okay, my lovelies. We've been reducing and reducing these tomatoes for 50, five, zero minutes at a very low slimmer, a simmer, or just a simmer. This is a good time to put in some pepper and smell it 
and taste it. Voila. But uh, it's, I, can, I already know that it's not ready yet. And there's lots of tomato pulp, see? The tomatoes have all uh, separated, but there's a lot of pulp. We like it, I like it to be um, chunky, but not like that. So I get out my tomato, ma my potato masher, which I've been using as a tomato masher. And that's just a thing I do. So we get all the goodness of the whole tomato, all of the plum tomato pulp blended into the sauce. We get all that deliciousness and it becomes pourable and still chunky and rustic. Of course, I probably will leave this on for another 20 minutes. There's nine more minutes left in the hour. I wish I had a spoon handy, I'll use this one. But I just wanna check the salt level. Hmm. Well, it's perfect. It's not over salted, but it's also, and there's some sweetness. Mmm. I'm going to scrape the bottom, make sure there's nothing burning. Chop it off. There's, a, there's quite a bit of sweetness. Well, given that I have nine minutes left of the hour, I'll probably, I don't know if you can see it. It's looking really good. I'll probably, probably cook it for another 20 minutes all right okay folks so that it turned out to be an hour and a half because I didn't um, worry about it getting sweeter and more delicious but you can see the consistency is very even very perfect the heat is off Although it's not entirely off the heat, but it, you know, one can throw in the aromatic basil leaves now. I'm just gonna chop up a few more because this is a largest, large-ish batch. Okay, let's just chop, chop, chop. It's a rough chop. These wilt quite a bit. But this is where, oh, it smells so good as soon as you cut it. And then you just stir that in so that the flavor infuses. And I'm pretty sure I threw away my spoon into the, oh, there it is. Just want to taste it. It's very thick. And it's reduced probably by half at this point. There are still little slivers of the sliced garlic, which I quite like, quite like that. And I'm just gonna taste it for the seasoning. I'm glad I didn't add too much more salt. Mm. Tastes just like marinara. And then I have my containers here. I think I'm going to make three separate ones and keep one out for the, keep one out for making pizzas later, today or tomorrow. And freeze the others.